As you may know, not know, my name is Sean Lim, and today I'm going to be talking about NVRAM and operating systems. So, my main goals today is I want you guys to know about the motivation behind NVRAM, be able to compare different memory technologies, and know what kind of questions are raised when you're dealing with NVRAM. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the motivation of behind NVRAM, talk about uh, current and current implementations of different memory and storage technologies and implementations of NVRAM, and the questions raised when you're dealing with operating systems, and I'll probably end with um, talking about a collection of NVRAM OS research I've found and compiled together. So um, when I'm making this, these slides, I had a I have a lot of information, and because this is only a 50 minute lecture, uh, I'm gonna, probably going to ask you guys which kind of approach you, you guys would rather have me uh, talk, uh, talk to you through about this. Do you want me to talk about more about the hardware implementation of Android RAM or more of the, the OS con or design issues in uh, dealing with Android RAM? Is that the question now? Yeah, I'm going to ask you right now. <laughs> Hardware, hardware. More of the hardware type of implementation? No, no, no they're wrong. I'm with Kyle. Okay. <laughs> it's a split. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll just try to make it easy. That's fine. So, um, in today's computer, like, the type of computer systems we want are fast, cheap uh, computer systems that can hold lots of storage. And because of that, we have this memory hierarchy, which we have the fast and, uh, and expensive uh, type of memories on top, and the, the, the storage that can hold lots of information, but slow at the bottom. And between each of these uh, levels of uh, memory, we have different orders of speed magnitude, like between registers of cache, it's like one order of magnitude difference, between memory to a uh, hard drive, it's like six orders of magnitude of difference. And the, pretty much the goal of NVRAM is we just want to bring that non validity up one, um, one level. So we will also want to keep but the speed of NVRAM to be the same or even better than current uh, memory systems. So I'm going to be talking about uh, the cur uh, comparison metrics with memory. So if you want to be able to compare memory, you've got to know how to compare them. Then I'll probably talk about current technologies and NVRAM implementations. So the first comparison metric is cost. What makes a, a silicon chip expensive is the amount of wires it takes the uh, amount of uh, wire you need on your chip because that just takes up a lot of room on your silicon wafer and uh, its wires are made out of metal. So th that's also expensive. And the other thing that's expensive about NVRAM, or not NVRAM, uh, silicon chips, is when you design a chip, you want to um, Make your integrated circuits uh, not x and y direction. So if you think of the, the silicon wafer, if this is the top view of the silicon wafer, and this is the side view of the silicon wafer. So if you have the silicon wafer, this is the side view. This is the top view. It's really bad if your components are large in both the x and y directions. So that's expensive. The reason that's expensive is because the business people want it uh, to put all their components all onto one chip so they can make their cost of the silicon wafers cheaper. So it's preferred to make your components uh, have multiple layers, so you want to make it so it grows in its Y direction or its V direction. So more layers, cheaper it is compared to the X and Y direction growth. So the next comparison me metric I'm going to be talking about is the size of the cell, uh, of the memory cell uh, itself. So 
Here at top we have uh, static, RAM, uh, static RAM, the bottom we have DRAM, and as you can see, SRAM takes six transistors. So if you saw my picture above, it takes six of these boxes and some wires together to make SRAM to work, compared to uh, DRAM where you just need three transistors and one capacitor, which you can just build a uh, in the Z direction. So that contributes to the uh, cost of the, um, of the memory technology. Also, it also contributes to the density of how much you can put into one single small chip. So the next um, definition or comparison metric I'm going to be talking about is density. I'm going to be using density as how many bits you can store into one cell. For example, in flash, you probably heard of things like SLC, which is considered single level uh, cell, and MLC, which is multi-level cell. And that pretty much just means in one cell, you can have two states or four states, between, uh, depending if you're using SLC or MLC. And um, the next comparison metric I'm going to be using is called is latency. I'm going to be using uh, how how long, how long does it take to read the bit and get it back, and also how long it takes to write and change the bit and get it back or and commit that change. So those are the four comparison metrics I'm going to be talking about. 